Hi everyone and welcome to Neuropsychology. My name is Puck Readers and I will be your instructor for this course. So this is your first video of your first uh, and your first lecture and we will start off with chapter 3 of the book Fundamentals of Human Neuropsychology. So in this chapter we're going to cover um, a broad variety of things. So in this video we'll talk about some terms and anatomical orientations and planes. And then in future videos we will talk about the overview of the nervous system, so how it's organized. Um, we'll talk about the support and protection of our brain and of the neurons. We'll talk about the blood supply of our brain and all the different brain cells and where they come from. So let's get started. Okay, so our brain is incredibly complex. The human brain has about 85 billion neurons and they all engage in information processing. And then we have uh, another 86 billion glial cells, which are kind of like helper cells and they help support the neural functioning. So each neuron, each one of those information processing cells makes about 15,000 connections with other cells. Neurons in our cortex, so in the outer layer of our brain, they are organized in little clusters, and we call these clusters nuclei. So you have one nucleus, and if it's plural, it's nuclei. So whenever neurons um, have similar functions, or if they look alike, they are all clustered together in a nuclei. So cells that are close together make the most of their connections with one another. And they also make long distance or long range connections. And these long distance connections form neural tracts. So whenever we talk about neural tracts, these are long distance connections. So for example, in this picture, you have a beautiful brain. It's all color coded. If you have neurons that connect from the front to the back of the brain, that would be because of a um, connect, connected by a neural tract. So another cool fact is that our brain is plastic. It can undergo changes uh, throughout your life. So a brain can lose and also can gain neurons and glial cells. Okay, so let's start off with some basic orientations and some names. So in neuroscience, we use a lot of Latin words. Um, so I'll talk about those words right now, and we're going to use them throughout all the lectures. So make sure you remember these terms. So let's start off with this picture of the parrot. So whenever you go towards the top of the head, we call that dorsal or superior. Whenever you go towards the bottom, so in this case of the whole parrot, but when we talk about brains, we normally mean the bottom of the brain, you go more ventral or inferior. If you go towards the front, we call that rostral, or another term for rostral will be anterior. And whenever you go towards the back, it is caudal. So if you look at the picture down here of um, a human head, so anterior or rostral is forward, posterior is back. What's another word for back? Caudal. And then ventral, it stores the bottom or inferior. And then towards the top is dorsal or superior. So let's throw in two more terms. Whenever you go towards the middle um, area of your brain, so whenever you go to, uh, inward, you are going more medial and whenever you are going more outward you're going more lateral so you're going more towards the side okay so it's really important for you to remember all these terms so we also talk about brains when we talk about MRI scans or if we have um, a section or a slice on a little plate for microscopy we talk about different planes so we have three important planes that I want to talk about. The first one is coronal. So if you split a brain up, so if you have a big knife and slice of the brain right here and split it up from front to back, 
you will have a coronal slide. So this is what that looks like. Just like a slab of brain in the coronal view. If you would cut up a brain and split it top to bottom, such as here, you split it top to bottom, you will have a horizontal or axial slice. So this is what that looks like. So here, here you see the brain beautifully. These are all MRI scans, by the way. And the last one, if you um, cut the brain up from side to side, if you split it up from side to side, you will have a sagittal view. So this is what a sagittal view looks like. So definitely remember all those terms. Write them down, highlight them in the slides. Uh, whatever you do, definitely don't forget these. Okay, so this is a picture of a real human brain. Um, and this is taken from the Harvard Brain Tissue Resource Center. So this is obviously from someone who has been deceased and their brain has been taken out. And here you can see that the brain has been cut open, so you can see in between the two hemispheres. So the brain has two hemispheres. You have a left hemisphere, and you have a right hemisphere. And they're kind of symmetric, but there are differences within those hemispheres. So here, the front of the brain, we call that anterior. The back of the brain, we call that posterior. Towards the side of the brain is lateral and towards the middle of the brain is medial. So we're looking at this brain from the top. So we are dorsally located from the brain, so this is a dorsal view of this brain. If you flip that same brain, brain around, you will have a front, ventral view of the brain. So again, here's the front, here's the back, Towards the side is lateral, going inward is medial, and then this side is the ventral side. But what is the other side called? Do you guys remember? So the top of the brain is the dorsal side. So if you have a view from the side, we call that a lateral view of the brain. So towards the top of the brain, you have uh, the dorsal, the dorsal is to the top, ventral is towards the bottom, so this is the beautiful ventral side. Towards the back of the brain is posterior, and towards the front of the brain is anterior. Okay, so I just gave you a bunch of terms. Um, they're very important for you guys to know because I'm going to use these interchangeably. So, rostral, caudal, dorsal, and ventral. These are terms that are relative to body parts. Anterior or frontal, posterior, lateral, medial. These are relative to location. So you can say um, something is more anterior than something else. So the frontal lobe is more anterior than the temporal lobe because it's a little bit more towards the front. And then frequently used brain sections, you have the coronal, where we split the brain up uh, front to back. You have the horizontal, where we split the brain up uh, up and down. And the sagittal is the last one that we covered. So these are relative to the viewer. Okay, so here you see another picture of the coronal cut, the sagittal cut, and the horizontal cut. Okay, a couple more terms I want you to know for this video. So, as you guys could see, we have two hemispheres, and our brain is pretty symmetrical. So, most things are very symmetrical. We have two of a lot of things. So, for example, we have two hippocampi, we have two amygdala, we have two thalamus. When something is on the same side, we call that ipsilateral. In, Lat in Latin, this literally means same side. When something is on the opposite side, it is contralateral. And when I, whenever something is in both hemispheres, we call it bilateral. So for example, if I would say my hand, uh, my right hand and my right feet are ipsilateral. 
my right hemisphere and my left hand are contralateral. And my right hand and my right hemisphere, um, oh sorry, my, let's say the thalamus is in both hemispheres, so you have the right and left thalami are bilateral. Two other, other terms that are really important are proximal and distal. Proximal is when something is close to one another. So I can say my pinky is um, proximal to my, my right pinky is proximal to my right thumb. And distal means when something is far from each other. So my right pinky is distal from my left pinky. So I know in uh, medicine they also use distal meaning going outwards and proximal going inwards. But let's stick to proximal being close to one another and distal being far from one another. Two more terms that I still confuse on a day-to-day -day basis are efferent and afferent. So these are really important and they're very confusing. So efferent means something is going away from the brain. So an example of an efferent pathway is your motor pathway because your brain will tell your muscles what to do so you can move. So your motor pathway is very important for walking or movement. So in the picture, this is uh, outlined in blue and blue arrows. So it goes from the brain, towards your leg, and your brain tells your leg to start walking. So it's going outwards, it's going from the brain to the leg, and this is a efferent pathway. Afferent is the opposite, so that is going towards the brain. So, for example, your body sends information towards your brain. An example of this is the sensory pathways. So whenever you touch um, soft feathers, or if you accidentally touch a hot pan, then the information from your hand is going to go towards the brain, and this is called an afferent pathway. So here you see it in red. So in this example, the person is stepping on a nail, ouch, it hurts, this information goes towards the brain and then your brain can tell your muscles to move so you lift your foot up so you don't step in it again. So often these pathways work together. This was the end of this video and I'll see you guys back for the next video soon.